Hi guys, David, Humble Trekker Channel. How are you doing today? Hope you're doing great. I picked up a couple of months ago, online, a vintage silver compass for just a small amount of money, about $2, two euros, 20 crowns, two pounds. And uh, I thought I'd share it with you and we'll talk a little bit about vintage compasses and the evolution of said compass. Let's take a look at the vintage compass against a modern equivalent. I've got it hanging up here on the beam. This is the vintage compass. It's known as the Type 1 Explorer and it's made in the 1960s. This is for uh, comparison purposes, modern equivalent base plate compass. There's a few differences on the vintage one compared to the modern one. The modern one is from the early 2000s. It's not really modern. It's, a, it's almost 20 years old itself now. Uh, but let's get them down to a stump top and look at them in details. The first thing you're going to notice on the vintage compass is the aluminium bezel. This is how they were made in the 1960s. The modern ones, of course, they're all plastic or perspex construction. This, um, specifically speaking, this is known as the base plate protractor compass. And it was invented in the 1930s by three Swedish brothers. They were Björn, Alvar and Arvid Schellström. And they invented them in the early 1930s and they really perfected them by the time they got to the end of that decade. Even in 1939 they came out with the very first um, mirror sighting base plate protractor compass. So from the 1930s the three brothers invented these base plate protractor compasses and they also invented the uh, fluid field housing which was a significant advantage. The reason the invention of the uh, fluid filled compass was a significant advantage is because it puts a restraint on the needle. It stops it swinging around. This makes it much faster and easier to take a bearing. In compasses that aren't damped with fluid or liquid, it used to take up to 30 seconds for the uh, compass to stop moving. Now you get the compass stops moving within four seconds. In the early days, of course, they didn't have access to easily manufactured perspex like this. So they needed to make the entire base plate out of a non-magnetic material. So they would have made it out of aluminium. And it's a kind of a skeletonized aluminium. I'll see if I can find a, a picture and put it up on the screen. So you get a skeletonized base plate. So you can see through the skeleton of the aluminium to the map. Of course, much easier with the availability of easy uh, manufactured perspex, cheap perspex, when you can see right through it onto the map. So the aluminium, that's the difference. This is a Swedish compass, so you'll notice that on the bezel it's got O, V, N and S for the uh, Swedish names for North, South, East, West. Apart from that, there's not a lot of differences, but there are some differences. It would have had originally rubber feet on it to help it uh, move across a map. What it doesn't have, which all modern silver compasses has, modern silver compasses, they either have a, a variable adjustable declination screw or they have, if they're the more basic model, they have the fixed scale inside the housing here. This compass does not have it. What it would have had back in the day when it was fresh and, and uh, new, it would have had uh, glow-in-the-dark dot markings here either side of the, uh, the arrow in the centre of the housing. So it doesn't have the declination, uh, fixed declination scale inside. And something, if you now, if you look carefully, you may have already noticed something weird here. It goes to 400 degrees there on the bezel. That's pretty funky, right? Well, no, that's not 400 degrees. This is a metric compass. It's using gradients. So it's, measure, it's got markings of 400 gradients all around uh, the outside instead of 360 degrees. This was thought to be a good idea in the middle of the 20th century. Everything should go metric. So you did get, uh, there was like a push to introduce metric navigation into the world. It's never really taken on and you generally don't see it now. On high level, high end compasses you can have like multiple different uh, gradients, grads and degrees. But this one is solely marked in, in uh, grads. That's 400 grads, so it's 100 grad per quarter instead of 90. Of course, it's got the magnifying glass on it. 
Uh, it's got the marching arrow and it works perfectly exactly the same way as it did in the 1960s you see these are aligned now because they're close to each other so they're going to be affecting each other but it, it lines up perfectly with north same as it did 50 odd years ago the markings have worn out i filled it in here with crayon so it's a bit darker here uh, apart from that it's a perfectly functioning uh, uh, compass that i'd use just as well today as the, uh, the more modern variant of it the cordage to hang around your neck and an aluminium uh, lanyard hole instead of uh, just a hole clipped in the perspex i'm rolling some old images of uh, silver campuses advertising and so on and so forth if you think about it it's incredible that these days we can buy for the price of a couple of cups of coffee or mcdonald's a device that will enable us to navigate and will probably if we look after it last us for 50 years 60 years 70 years i don't know i mean this is a compass we're looking at now which is nearly uh, 60 years old could be definitely over 50 years and uh, works as good as the day it was invented and if you think through mankind's um history the millions of years that we've been on the planet or the hundreds of thousands of years that we've been exploring the planet how difficult it's been for us to basically just get from a to b how many struggles how many lives have been lost from the ability of not being able to find north or find a bearing get lost uh, in the desert in the seas in the um in the jungles in the woods wherever you are and these days we can just go down to basically any gas station any hardware store or go on the internet and find something that for hundreds of thousands of years would have been worth you know 10 times its weight in gold probably the shellstrom brothers radically improved navigation especially for the uh, the common man with the invention of the liquid filled base plate protractor compass in the 1930s and essentially the technology they developed in the 1930s which was a quantum leap in compass invention it stayed the same now nearly 100 years later fantastic until the next time take it easy